Hi, this is Jay. This is Bob. And this is Steve. And today we're going to talk about love, death, and robots. So we watched the series. It's new. It just dropped as of this recording about, what, two week weeks ago? A week yeah. ago, two weeks yeah. ago. We jammed through it. And uh, let's just say it. We loved it. We all loved it. Everybody I talked to loves it. It's lovable yeah, yeah. and awesome in so many ways. And right. it really is about love, death, and robots. I mean, it has a sci-fi backbone to it, but there are undertones of horror. There are undertones of hard science fiction. Mm -hmm. um, there's monsters. There's comedy, every, comedy dark, yeah. dark humor. Um, this is a Netflix drop. This, yep. just, mm -hmm. just recently they dropped it. This was actually, this has been in gestation for like 11 years. Dave uh, Fincher and Tim Miller uh, are the creative forces behind this. Yep. Fincher is a guy who did um, Seven, mm -hmm. and he did also uh, Fight Club, yep. Hello. Yep. and then Miller did uh, Deadpool, and he's working on the new Terminator. So these guys... That's some cred. And that's only a little bit of what, of what they've done in, in their lives. Right. But they were working, they wanted to do a reboot of um, Heavy Metal. Remember yeah. Heavy Metal? They How awesome totally that was? had the vibe of I, Heavy I said, Metal. I said it, had, it was they, derivative they, of it. Yeah, but yeah. they wanted to do a, re, like a full-on reboot that was more attuned to like the late aughts is when they were yeah. trying to do this. Yeah. Couldn't get it done. They couldn't get it done. Because they wanted to do an anthology. And 10, 15 years ago, an anthology movie, yeah. th the movie execs were like, no way. We're just not, they were just too, they're too afraid of it. Well, too wasn't Heavy Metal successful? I mean, I thought yeah, it was. But yeah, but that was like in the 80s, right? So that was in the 80s. And the, they, did a, they did a sequel, I think. And it didn't do that great. So it's a scary thing. It's a scary prospect. So this is, but this I is. I love anthologies. I do too. This is, but this is one of those, those things where Netflix, I love Netflix so, so much more now because they, they, they sat with these two guys, Dave and Tim, and they're like getting the pitch. And they're like, you know, we have no numbers on, on this type of thing. We have mm -hmm. no idea how this is going to go, but we really like it. It's really interesting, and we're going to take a risk on this. So here, blam, here's money. Here's a pile of money. Go kick ass on this. And yep. that's exactly what they did. They yeah. took a risk. I love them for that because these days, where can you get any type of streaming service well, or movie right. that won't take a, that, like, oh, it's too risk averse. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. They're, the industry, these industries are, are typically risk averse, but we also have to keep in mind, like Netflix is doing it, it's, it's a very smart method for them. Like back in the 70s and 80s, it, you know, when, when people were still getting signed onto record labels, as, as an example, a record label would hire t uh, 10 bands, pay for them to do an album and go on a tour with the hope that only one Mm -hmm. had some recoup. Okay. So if you think about the equation, it does make sense. Plus, these guys are not like people off the street. I mean, we're talking about producers and directors yeah. here that have street, massive street cred. I mean, Netflix is throwing a lot of shit against the wall and hoping that something That's sticks. True. This definitely is stuck. So I mean, I definitely, again, like we said, love the anthology. It's sci-fi, horror, speculative. It's, it's animated and oh. adult. It's one, so adult. Yeah. One episode has live action. The rest are animated. And there are different... Uh, although there was animated components to it, but there was only one show that actually had actors, like a lot of action actors. Um, most of them are, no, I shouldn't say most, but half or so, a third, are, are CG, realistic CG. You yeah. could tell instantly that it's CG. Yeah. But you, know, you never for a moment don't know that Well, that, some of them are CG. stylized. Yeah, some but, of them are but, stylized CG. But they're realistic. CG. They're, St some are stylized some CG. Some are photo real. Some are photo yeah. real. Some are c cartoons. Well, the ones yeah. that are photo real, I thought that they were rotoscoping, where they had live actors do it, and they probably... Just paint over it. Yes, but I just found out just before the show, Beyond Aquila Riff, 100% mm. animated. Yeah. 100% animated. That makes me even love that episode even more. That was a great episode. That was a fantastic episode. Totally photoreal CG. And there was no, there was no real uncanny valley in, the, in that entire episode. No, I didn't Some think people so, yeah. are saying yes. I'm, I'm thinking that it wasn't really the, the sense of an animated corpse like, like Polar Express. Some movements were kind of like, not quite real. No, you can tell that it's, that it's right. CG because and it is the way they move. Yeah. Like as right. soon as they move, there's just something that isn't quite... It tells you how attuned the human eye oh, is God, yes. We're to move. Oh, God, yes. We're evolved. The subtlest difference in how they move and you instantly pick up that it's CG. But it also so it was fantastic and I wasn't pulled out by, no. the, by the, you know, the... Not the at all. It's a great media. Effect. And I great noticed media. that you know, we can pick up skin colors very well. Like I can look at a, a face and it has all the features of, the, of skin. But you're like, eh, it's just a little bit off. It doesn't seem totally correct. But it's how it reflects the light. It's the you other know, imperfections yeah. and everything. But, I mean, that doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't take me out of the of No, you're like, oh, I'm watching a really good CG yeah. episode. So the, the, what's good about the anthology approach is that you, 
for each episode, you have one great idea, mm -hmm. and they play out that idea. It's five, 10, 15 minutes right. or so. And it's fantastic. It's like it's a, a self-contained little story. And the, and as science fiction goes, I thought the stories. I mean, they, they weren't all fantastic. They were they were all at least good, and mm -hmm. and a lot of them were just fantastic. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, and you know we've talked about this before. Like, short stories in a weird way have to be better stories because you only have what some of these are really short, like eight minutes, five yeah. minutes for the uh, for the. Uh, the best, the best titled one was the yogurt one. What was the title? Oh yeah, of that? the yogurt. Yeah. The day the yogurt took over the world or yeah. something. It was fantastic. That and that was mostly that was Pixar esque, I would think, right. than any other one. Yeah. Very, very stylized. Very, yeah, stylized. Um, well, I like but a great story. I do like that they're they're picking a, a wide array of of separate stories. You know, they're not saying, hey, we want everything to revolve around like these three themes. You know, this is the, and I'm not playing a joke on this. In other words, you watch the whole season and you're going to see. Uh, an insane array of stories. Mm -hmm. They're all very different. Right, and they all reflect. Remember, they, there was a different team that animated pretty much every movie. They were in Hungary, Korea, United States. So it was a, like, anima like Animatrix, right? They, mm -hmm. gave, they gave each story to a, to a different animator, um, which, which I loved. And uh, I just can't gush enough over this. I, we all I enjoyed loved every it so episode. much. Yeah. I, just, I binged that in two days, and it's not a lot of time. Three hours, I think, for the entire, yeah. for the entire season, because they are very short. It and is almost like a feature-length anthology. You know, it's a, it's a long right. movie, if you that's think about right. it that way. Sure. But there isn't an arc that flows through all the episodes, unlike, you know, oh. Heavy Metal had a backbone story, yeah, yeah. They, which is fine. I mean, I, I consider that they considered having doing something like that, but they didn't want to be restricted at all. They yeah. wanted to jump around to all these disparate topics and not be constrained by any type of theme that was going through. And that's mm. fine because they because the, the topics that they cover are just all over the place. You know, uh, lycanthropes in war and uh, and and sentient yogurt. I mean, how do you how would you even yeah, attempt yeah, to stitch that well, together? And that's those are the best episodes where it feels like. Somebody asked a question, huh, like, what would it be like if werewolves existed? Would we recruit them into the army? What yeah. would that be like? <laughs> yeah, right. that's, like, like that's where it starts, <laughs> cool. and then you run with that, and it's fantastic. And would we discriminate against them? <laughs> Probably, because they're not, you know, not just like us. They're so they're animals. And uh. the, the, the writing quality was at a level where I heard particular lines in episodes where I, I, you actually get a little like, that was a really good line <laughs> well that was a really funny thing i don't know how much we want to say right now there's you know we well, can that, a little spoilers I, here i think that gets back to the short story genre because the writing does have to be better you have a very little, small amount of time which means you have to develop your characters yeah. and you have to introduce us to a world like even just i think it was the very first episode where the basic idea is that uh it's arena fighting with monsters that people are controlling right you right. jack into them and then you're fighting as a biological you know, monster in an arena. Right. Great idea, but there's more to it than that. Yes. But they develop the characters re instantly. Like you know, you know a lot about that that character. Yeah, you get you a have feel to. for them. Yeah. And you also get a feel for the world. Mm -hmm. Very. That's so the world is a character they have to develop sure. very quickly as well. And like, what forces are at work here? And then they still have to set you up for expectations and then break those expectations at the end mm -hmm. and in a way that leaves you like, wow, that was fantastic. Right. And, they, like, and they hit it out of the park. Yeah, like the uh, the farmers on the mechs. Great story. Yeah. You think you know about their environment. And then at the last five seconds, literally, something happens. Blow and your it's mind. like, yeah. whoa, new context here. That's even more fascinating. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's fun because it's almost like, here's the 5,000 foot view. Here's the 10,000. Now let's go back to the 100,000 foot yeah, view. Yeah, and like, like, uh -oh. what? Oh, Didn't yeah. see that coming. Uh, yeah. lots Although of good twists. some of them were a little predictable, yeah. But you know, only because we've consumed so much science fiction, how, you know, it's so hard to come up with a story that doesn't have any, you know, elements that we haven't encountered before. I'm okay. Yeah, like I'm okay. Similar, with a it's little, fine. A little predictability is yeah. fine. It's really the way that they tell the story. Yeah. It's, it really comes down to the brushstrokes. And you know, I, I was trying to figure out like, how do I want to like tell people about this? Well, all right. Look, if you've seen heavy metal, you get the idea. There's yeah. different stories. But these, the, the power in each one of these stories really just absolutely comes down from the bare bones. The writing is excellent. Mm -hmm. The dialogue is excellent. Like you're getting like, I'm checking these great boxes for each episode. I really can't, couldn't put any of the episodes down in any way. Like, of course I have my favorites, right? Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Let's talk about, let's talk about our What's favorites. your one favorite? Pick one. Um, I'll tell you, the, the, my least favorite was the yogurt one. Oh, that was adorable. It was, was funny, so I know, it, but it, it was a little. It too, was the most out of character. Of it was. It, it was. That's the, fine. It was the one that had the lightest fare, in a sense. Right. 
Um, we solved fusion. That, that had me at that line. That was great. I mean, I fusion. really, I really love the 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 hardest science fiction one that they had was, was the one where the. Uh, the three people are on the freighter and they go into the... Yeah. Beyond the Aquila Rift. That, yeah, was that, one, was... That's, that is also my favorite because, first off, the animation was, was wonderful. Um, it was actually kind of hot in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. just like some... Yeah, some it's adult. Some it's very naked adult, CG yeah. going on there. And, um, and it's 100% animated. The movements that they got out of, those, out of those characters, not rotoscope, not mapped onto real people, yeah. is blowing me away. I, I do have to say that I like that episode. I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was one of the more predictable episodes for me. I don't know what it was, but like, a, like the very beginning of it, I'm like, this is oh yeah, Planet no, Earth. they set you up for that. They set you up. I, I think totally that's, do. But that's I fine. think that they, they probably expect like any seasoned science fiction fan is going to see that coming, and they still made it. Right, they, they still, still made it worse. Still, still I loved it. Still I loved it because the, the the level of the, the photorealistic CG, the fact that this was the purest sci-fi episode in the entire. It was hard science fiction. This was this was spaceships and uh, and gates and, and gating through light years of space. Right. And and you had the you had the alien. We it was doing spoilers. Yeah, here. Let's, let's give a little spoilers now. The, the spoiler. Well, yeah. the end. The, of course, the alien at the end was was fantastic. But that to me, what I was thinking about the next day in the shower, it was like. The transition to what he was being fed, the reality he yeah. was being fed, and what the, what it was, he, it, that was a shocking transition. It was. To me. He looked dead. He looked like a zombie. He did. He, he, he looked like he had been so well in done. cryostasis for about t t for twenty years. years. Yeah. <laughs> he looked horrific. And then his environment, and then what 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 she looked like, and then yeah. and then just thinking about it, you know, you know, say you get the pattern, whatever it was that was wrong, and you're gate and you gate a hundred thousand light years away, you're never going to get back. You're like, okay, my life's over. Being fed any reality you want from a spider alien, that's not too bad. Yeah. I mean, it's like, okay, I got some realities for you. Let's let's do this one. I, I mean, I could make that very interesting for a, a long time. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically living so, what time you have left in virtual reality. I think one common element that most of the stories have is that there's a there is a mind fuck. Yeah, you know what I mean. There really is. Like, yeah, I think that's part of it. Is that they want to surprise you with something really mm -hmm. weird and, and off base, and that that makes them all very interesting. Because as you become a fan of the show, you're yeah. waiting for that. Like, what yeah. is that? What's going to drop? What's going to be the so weird thing? My favorite one was Which one? the one about the artist. I thought that that was the most creative, the yeah. least predictable, and the, yeah. that was the one where the whole time you're like, "Where is this going?" Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Didn't see that coming. Yeah, it was, but it was just like the story itself was so interesting and and very very different than anything. Yeah, I'm, very, I'm completely related to it. I yeah. totally bought. I know you didn't feel a connection to it, but well, it's very existential and really makes yeah, you think about it. But yeah. of course, I, I have a, vis a visceral reaction of like, "Wait, you're a really cool robot, and you want to become a really unsophisticated robot?" Uh, I get the I get that what they're going yeah, I for. Go deeper but about I, it. I I yeah, know, yeah. but the superficial yeah. stuff is so awesome. <laughs> Come on, he was a cool robot. I, I know that. I mean, he did achieve a height. You know, you just look at the success of what happened to him. It was very Yeah, where else could he go at that point? But like, I right, really, it, 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 all. it resounded. Yeah. To that, I get there it. was something in that episode that really talked to me because yeah. I, I, and this is a spoiler, but I completely understood him wanting to almost, in a way, go back to his childhood. You know, yeah. life is hard as an adult. It's hard. If you have kids, it's hard. Work is hard. Everything is hard. Keeping that ball, yeah. all those balls up in the air. And he wanted to go back to the, the basic simplicity and the bliss of being a, a child. Clean that of, tile. Of his version of a child Clean again. that yeah. tile. <laughs> My second favorite episode, I think, it's hard because now I'm, I'm, you know, you're splitting hairs between what flavor of ice cream do you love. But the one about the... The uh, it was set in like some alternate Hong Kong yeah. uh, setting. Good hunting was it? Good hunting. I think it was hunting? good hunting. Yeah, that was a really cool Loved episode. It. One because it started off with a kung fu vibe, and I love kung fu. Right, like, oh, that old school kung fu. The vibe. animation was good in that one too. It was yeah. different. Kind and that of, was it like the only flavor to it. really conventional cell animation. Yeah, all totally old school, and yeah. and it was beautiful. I it. And I and uh, yeah, I felt that too, Jay. The, the, the choreography, the fight choreography, and the, the spirit creature that she was yep. and then what happens then really they transition to steampunk yeah it goes off the rails all yeah the history steampunk yep. like wow fan and steampunk I mean, steampunk robots yeah that's that great. was a great episode yep. fantastic yeah. it's hard it's hard to pick a favorite but there's, a, yeah, there's three or four that were just like that's oh. definitely in my top five and then i also like the one i mentioned about the the fighting uh monsters because again just because the interplay between the characters yeah and, and and there was you know again if you surprise me at the end you get extra credit. Right. Yeah. Right? And I no, also definitely. like I loved the brutality at that yeah. at the very end you're like okay 
And, uh, oh, look, there's a CG boob. Oh, that's kind of cool. And then, like, whoa, <laughs> yeah, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. It totally went and to then, a place. And then they, oh, they one-upped it again they when, it, when, yeah. when she was, was stepping on her, her head. That was brutal, dude. That was nasty. Yep, right. And then it's just like, and then that twist. So that's, I, that's what I want to see, some sci-fi fantasy animation that just like not meant your kids would, would need therapy for years if they saw that. <laughs> we, I, I want more adult R rate. R rated stuff is like so right. Remember when we were kids, there would be lots of R rated movies. Relatively speaking, now who nobody wants an R because that limits your audience. Yeah. You need a blockbuster. You can't have a blockbuster with an R. But R, you know, that's some stuff that you just won't see anywhere else. It's adult content. I mean, it, it's important. Well, if it's not gratuitous, which it isn't, this was implicit. It was important right. to the storytelling. Yeah. So just. And essentially, what I liked about this, it was just no holds barred storytelling. Yeah. Right. Again, it wasn't anything gratuitous. Could happen. It was just, but it was not that there's anything wrong with gratuitous. But no, but it, it was in a while. It's it was fun. important to the story, yes. and, and it enhanced it, and it made it right. Absolutely, it wasn't Absolutely. holding back in any anything. They hit on a, a, the perfect formula, I think. This idea, you know, the, the the concept, the the rails that they've created this show to be on, it worked so well. Are we going to see more? Yeah, so that's what I wanted to talk about. So the, the, what I loved about the success of season one is that they have a connection to all these artists and storytellers already. The world is filled with fantastic sci short, fi short yeah. science fiction. I mean, it's like there's, this, there's a cornucopia out there. They'll never run out of ideas. Right. You know, now that the, the show is there, they might get submissions from thousands of authors. You know, I just feel like the second season could be way even more intense than the first yeah. season with the, the world open up to them. And they're talking of doing some, uh, if it happens, which I, I assume it's going to happen because I think this is going to be very very successful. And we're just a week in, a week, yeah. 10 days yeah. in. But I think it's going to warrant the second season. But they're talking about a, a little bit longer form, like you know, going maybe 30 or 40 minutes sure. maybe. And that's fine, that's fine. Whatever uh, works whatever, for the story. Right, whatever you, whatever you need. I, I trust no these guys. Do what you want to no do and just keep it coming. Yeah. Okay. All right, so... So you're saying you like that you endorsed it? Yes, we Absolutely. endorsed it. We, we all loved it. We were yeah, calling we each other. We, we got the chance to watch some of the episodes together. Um, I haven't been feeling well, and I got the chance to polish off the rest of the season last night, and uh, it was comforting in my... In my <laughs> <laughs> uh, but listen... I want to watch them again. Yeah, we yeah. highly recommend oh, yeah. you, you dip in, and, and this is the type of thing, like, when something hits this level of excellence, you should tell your friends. Like, definitely talk to people about it and, and talk about it on social media, because we want... We want people to watch the show. Yeah. I felt like we were watching again sort of a classic age of science fiction. Yeah. You know, like what science, like these are the kind of stories that would be told in the old science fiction magazines. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. I, I, we want That's that because back. there's the strange and creep factor to yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. And those are, that was, that has literally it's legitimately like fantastic been tales or whatever. Well, yeah. well that said, um, they should do next time like a more retro, yeah. like a really cool retro type of uh, sci-fi that you'd see in the 50s. Yeah. Um, and that, but that's kind of like steampunk. It's kind of like right. like that. But uh, but I'd love to see something like that. Right. And more anthologies. We have yep. um, the Twilight Zone coming back. I think this we're starting to see a trend here. Mm -hmm. but I like it. I like it. So go watch it now. And guys, thanks for watching our show. We're Alpha Quadrant Six. You can go to Alpha Quadrant Six. Dot com anytime you like. I mean, you can go in at 3 in the morning. We don't care, right, Jim? You okay with that, Bob? Okay, Absolutely. so you have clearance, my friends. We'll talk to you next week. <laughs>